a Canadian cartoonist, graphic novelist. Chester Brown is our guest. His new book is called Paying For It, a comic strip memoir about being a Johnny. He has written other things, your Louis Real series. Mm -hmm. uh, you wrote one about Ed the Clown. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. This is a departure. This must be a tough marketing job <laughs> for the publisher, or is it? Well, it is a subject people are very interested in. Mm -hmm. So, but on the other hand, with my with the book I did about Riel, that seemed to do so well because so many parents uh, bought bought that book for their for their kids, or it was given as gifts. Right. I'm not sure how many people are going to be giving this book as a gift. Certainly not to their children. Not to their children, but mm -hmm. certainly to your friends because um, it's it, well, the cartoons are well crafted, as you as thank you. Uh, you must know. But but if you give it as a present to a guy, I don't know. There's some, some kind of implication there that you think that some people might or be uncomfortable some kind of implication. With. That if you go here, we're done, <laughs> <laughs> right? But do you think some of your men friends? Tell me about Seth, who right. thought you must be a little bit out of your mind, a, a kind oddball, yes, but a little <laughs> bit out of your mind for choosing this path, mm -hmm. for deciding it was the way you wanted to go, for being this honest, mm -hmm. and for telling anybody mm -hmm. that too. Right. Um, he thought you were having a midlife crisis. He did. And the thing is, in the book, I deny that. Uh, since I finished the book, I've kind of rethought that. Maybe Seth was right. Men experience midlife, the midlife these midlife crises by you know re re wanting to reconnect with their youth in some way, mm -hmm. and um, I can't deny that I was seeing all these young women and that uh, there's a similarity there. Uh, I think I probably didn't experience it as a crisis because most guys who did something like that would be married or maybe in a relationship, mm -hmm. and if they cheated, they would feel very guilty, and so they experience it as, as a crisis. But because I wasn't in a relationship like that, I didn't experience my midlife crisis as a crisis. Well, what was everybody so nice to you about it, do you think? And pretty <laughs> much, they seem to be. Your, your ex-girlfriend right. says, you know, Chester, if that's your path, go. It's so <laughs> evolved, in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, your parents know? Uh, you no, some, no. No. Okay. But, uh, but Your stepmother doesn't know. <laughs> most most of my relatives know. Mm -hmm. So they know, and they say, Chester, mm -hmm. he's a bit odd, but this is how he chooses to live his life. Mm -hmm. uh, Trudeau said, as you know, and we've heard it so much mm -hmm. about the uh, state has no business in the bedrooms of the nation. Mm -hmm. That's my motto. That's that's, mm -hmm. uh, and the state still barges into the bedrooms of prostitutes and right. feels they have a right to and. I don't think they do. Well, who protects the vulnerable in that case? If a woman is in severe trouble, can't get out. If a man is in severe trouble, can't get out. A, a male prostitute. I think most prostitutes who want to leave are able to leave, do eventually. I know there are prostitutes who are involved with, say, pimps, who it's, mm -hmm. it's difficult for them to get away. But it's, it's the same thing with a, a woman who's involved with an abusive boyfriend. It's, do we stop um, people from having boyfriend-girlfriend relationships right. because that sort of thing can happen? Yes. Well, at a broad level, it's the power of the state stops at my body. No matter right. what I want to do, if I'm male or female, <coughs> that's it. If, if, um, if a man is being violent with a woman, uh, you know, I hope she has the, the, the ability to get out of that situation. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe there should be ways of, well, I don't know. It's, I, I, there need it's, to be ways mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and laws for that, right. for abuse. But, but, but for abuse in general, I, I don't see the issues of boyfriend-girlfriend or, or spousal abuse being different from you know, right. uh, abuse in prostitution situations. Mm -hmm. uh, sex for sale and the men who buy it, as you know, Victor Malarik wrote a a big book on mm -hmm. that. He was here, talked about it, mm -hmm. and it was more on the human trafficking and, and some of the abuse. In your case, it's about the constraints of traditional relationship. Uh, who said we had to go through life this particular way? Mm -hmm. And if you choose to do it another way, why not? Uh, that's the that's way what I see I'm it. getting. <laughs> <laughs> mm, it's a bold book. It's a meditation on romantic love, and mm -hmm. it's a meditation on human connection. How, 
how did you change the way you feel about humans, how we connect, no matter what the circumstance? You're with a stranger. Mm -hmm. I think even when you're in a paid situation, there is that level of human connection. You're, you want to get along with the person you're with. Um, you don't want any sort of hostility. And if there is, if a situation does, and as, as you see in the book, there are certain occasions where uh, a prostitute would get angry with me for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. And you know, you have to deal with the, uh, another person. You have to take into consideration their feelings and how you might have done something wrong. Right. And, um, what did you learn from the women? Uh, I learned there are so many stereotypes about prostitutes, and I thought I didn't have any going in. But when I first started meeting these women, I realized I, I guess I did, because they seemed so normal and just like regular people. Not and, robotic. Or not robotic. Um, certainly, well, one of the stereotypes would be that they're all damaged women in some way, and um, they didn't seem like that. Now, now, of course, usually I was only meeting them for an hour or so, and even if I repeated with a woman, say, five times, I still, that still would have only been five hours. Mm -hmm. the, so the woman I would know the best would be Denise, but she's certainly not um, a damaged person. Uh, do you think if you didn't pay her, she would continue to have sex with you? <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, I, I hope we would still be friends. Be friends. Um, but no, I think I, mm. I, I don't think she desires me in that way. Really? So it's a true courtesan, in a sense. Uh, yes. uh, you didn't want to call it paying for it. Right. Um, to me, that title implies that I'm paying for it in more than just a financial way, that I might be paying for it in some emotional way or you know, something like that. And I don't think I am. I, I you, feel emotionally fine. OK, do you think in your lifetime you will go back to a, a more romantic relationship? I don't think so. You're done, <laughs> pretty much. Yes. How nice to meet you. Very nice to meet What's you. What's next? How are you going to top this one? I don't know if I can top it. Uh, my next book is probably going to be an adaptation of a classic work of literature, mm. but I don't want to say which one. OK. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to you then. OK. OK. Paying Forward, a comic strip memoir about being a John Chester Brown.